And let us now start with uh, our very interesting debate on the new pact on migration and the asylum. Uh, our guest today, Commissioner for Home Affairs, Ilva Johansson, whom I warmly uh, welcome. Commissioner Johansson, uh, exactly one year ago, you, attend, you attended your first meeting with the European Committee of the Regions as Commissioner responsible for Home Affairs. So I would like to thank you today for your great respect to the work done by mayors and regional leaders on migration. Let me be clear, migration is not a new phenomenon and shall not be perceived as a problem. The problems come in the absence of a holistic policy on migration. And this is the case today, unfortunately. Not properly integrating migrants bears a cost in economic, political and social terms. Problems arise when we do not show solidarity and act with responsibility all across the EU. When we do not offer fair solutions to the countries of origin. When we do not efficiently deter organized criminals from smuggling human beings across Europe's external borders. When there is a lack of Europe in the management of the migration phenomenon and we witness tragedies like Moria, as well as the thousands of victims in the Mediterranean. When only some countries are left alone to deal with the migration issue. Regions and cities in the Aegean and the Mediterranean to face alone this immense issue is not a sign of solidarity and it's not definitely not how Europe should work because this is a European issue it's not a national issue I therefore thank you for the proposals that you Commissioner Johansson and Vice President Schinas have put forward towards a compromise between the member states and the EU's institutions as you know Local authorities are the key implementers of integration policy. They also risk becoming the most exposed elected officials when it comes to managing migration. For this reason, we echo their call for direct funding and for a voice in the legislative phases on the issues of migration and integration. The Committee of the Regions stands ready to facilitate specific public consultations with local and regional authorities which must be tailored to their specific needs if they are to be useful. I welcome the Commission's action plan on integration, its objectives and the proposal for a political partnership with the Committee of the Region. Our cooperation agreement on migrants integration that we adopt today will enhance our joint efforts. We need mayors to exchange their best practices. We need them to engage with their own communities. We need them to offer tools that will allow migrants to access the local labor market, learning the language of the host community. We need them to promote a positive narrative to fight populism, extremism and hate speech. And above all, we need not to leave them alone in the handling of this crisis. In this challenge, the example of Mayor Pavel Adamovic, our former COR member, will guide uh, many of us. Local leaders are pivotal in establishing a non-divisive, -di non-divisive discourse. The sustainable integration of refugees and migrants in small cities and rural areas would also become a factor for regional development, for instance, by making use of empty housing. Successful integration can also contribute to demand for public and private provision. Odemira in Portugal hosts 3,400 migrants, 12% of its population, coming from 23 different countries. As the native population cannot meet its needs, about 70% of the agricultural worker of its farms are migrants, who 
who through their labor have become integrated in their new community. Municipalities have also helped by setting a new governance structure, such as the Office for Migrants Integration. In Roqueta del Mar, Adalusia, whereby integration plans are drawn up for migrants and by migrants. Plans for labor inclusion through education and training have been successful put forward throughout Europe, from Oldenburg, Germany, to Vanta, Finland, from Solva in Sweden to Brussels, with its Duo for Jobs initiative, which provides volunteering mentors who accompany migrants in their search for a job. The government of Catalonia has implemented a mentoring program to facilitate the social inclusion of unaccompanied minors, which includes learning the host region's language. Braga, with its Intercultural Mediators project, promotes social inclusions and fights poverty and discrimination, while Mechelen lives by example in preventing segregation. So I want to call for the direct involvement in the Schengen Forum of those regions that have former powers in the field of home affairs, since their action can provide added value to achieving EU and national objectives in terms of security and border management. Tackling migration also means assessing its territorial impact, which is spread unevenly across Europe. The impact must be taken into account. When redistributing funds or when considering how to enhance resilience, we will promote the specific needs of border regions on relocation and resettlement in cooperation with diaspora organizations in their respective regions and by promoting decentralized cooperation with the counterparts in non-EU countries of origin. Dear Commissioner, to conclude my intervention, I would like to say that efficient strategic communication and coordinated work on sensitive topics like migration remains essential. So in this challenge, I really count on your personal help and the help of the Commission. Together, we can succeed in the interest of our people and their local communities. And together, we can finally reach a point where the migration issue will be faced and dealt with as a European issue, not as an issue of one, two or three countries. We are all in this together. So let's deal and let's fight for this issue together. Thank you very much. The floor is yours, Commissioner. Thank you very much, um, uh, Apostopoulos. Uh, and I m very much agree in many of the words that you have said, and I'm very happy to work close together with you and the Committee of the Regions. Uh, let me start. I will present very shortly uh, the pact because I think many of you already know a lot of the content. But I would like also to um, say a few words on why we have presented and what are the, the goals that we want to achieve. First, we must uh, recognize that migration is something normal. Migration has always been there, will always be there. Just to give you some figures, last year uh, the EU member states uh, issued 3 million residence permits. 3 million. More than 1 million of those were for a work permit. But the most uh, common uh, reason to come to the European Union is for love. People that are falling in love in the EU citizens come here to live here. Or for other family reasons. Work is another important reason, but also study, do research, and some that need international protection. Last year, more than one million people left the European Union. The most common reason is because they're falling in love with a person outside the European Union or for other family reasons, but some also for work or for study or research. So we have a net uh, growth of people in the European Union with around one to two million people a year. And we need that. We are an aging society, so we need migration. 
And I should say that this part of our migration works quite well. Last year, uh, 700,000 people uh, became uh, European citizens. That means they're probably going to stay here for the rest of their lives. So what we are addressing in our pact on migration is in asylum are those part of migration policy that are not working well enough. And that is, uh, for example, the irregular arrivals. Last year, we had 140,000 irregular arrivals. That's pretty few compared to the 3 million residence permit. But still, they, uh, this is uh, a challenge that we need to address. We need fewer irregular arrivals to the European Union and instead open up for legal pathways, both for refugees and uh, labour migration. We also need to do much more when it comes to returns. We have a lot of people uh, that have applied for asylum, got an asylum decision that is negative, got a return decision, but are not be, um, have not returned to the country of origin. And I think this is important that we can show our citizens that there is a clear distinction between those that are eligible to stay, they should be welcome, they should be integrated and be part of our society, and I will come back to integration shortly. But those that are not eligible to stay, they have to return to their country of origin. And this is an area where member states can do a lot more, but we can also need to work close with, with third countries. And third, uh, what uh, we need to address is the solidarity between member states. As you rightly said, Apostopoulos, uh, the geographical realities uh, do um, causes that the member states are facing very different kind of realities. And some member states receive much more irregular arrivals than others. And that means we need a clear and mandatory solidarity mechanism between member states so that member states can help each other when you are under pressure, but also for search and rescue cases, or if there should be a, um, a crisis. I should say uh, we are in a very different situation now compared to 2015. Then we had almost 2 million irregular arrivals, and most of them were refugees. As I said last year, we had 140,000 irregular arrivals, and only one third of them were refugees. A majority were not in need of international protection and need to be to return to the country of origin. And this is how we have also tailored uh, the proposal. So we are focusing very much on the relations with third countries, countries of origin, transit and departure. So to be able to manage migration in a good way in the European Union, we need to manage migration together with our partner countries. And this has been my focus now the last six months. I traveled a lot to partner countries. I reached out also to renew uh, and set up starting negotiating readmission agreement with third countries. We need to work together with them both in the case of fighting human smugglers preventing people to go into uh, very dangerous journeys that might even risk their lives. But also to make sure that returns actually work and to help third countries to manage migration and their borders uh, well. So this is an important part of, of the package. To be able to um, do uh, more returns quicker, it's important that the decision can come quick. I think uh, it's very obvious we have a problem today in many member states where people that are not eligible for international protection have been in a country for years before they got a return decision. And then it's very difficult because you've been part of society, you are falling in love, you are maybe working, and then it's more difficult both for the individual and for the authorities to actually carry out the returns. That's why we are proposing that we should have a quicker decision already at the borders for those that are probably not in need of international protection. We propose a mandatory screening process to make sure that everybody is registered, checked for security reasons, health checks, but also to decide what kind of process that person, if he or she applies for, an international, for, for asylum, what kind of process that person should go through. 
and those that are coming from countries with a very low recognition rate and that are not families with small children or unaccompanied minors or vulnerables, they should go through border procedures. The reason is that I would like to have a quick decision and a quick return of those not in need of international protection. We are also proposing a mandatory solidarity mechanism that is quite flexible, but also that could show real solidarity if necessary, when necessary, to a member state under pressure. Uh, it's possible at the end of the day with our proposal that member states should be obliged to do either relocation or return sponsorship to help a country that have too many uh, migrants at a specific case. What is the return sponsorship? It's uh, the, the European Commission, we do a readmission agreement with third countries. We help through Frontex to carry out the plane that could actually bring people back uh, to be returned. But we do not have the competence as Commission to do the individual, uh, um, the individual uh, documents for a specific person to be returned to a specific country and the identification of that. We can help with it, but at the end of the day, it has to be a member state that actually take this decision. That's a way where member states can help each other to do that if a country are under pressure with too many people that need to be returned, and that will be a proposal. Uh, we also propose that the search and rescue cases should be part of a solidarity mechanism. We also said in the pack that we should come with additional proposals and I've already presented the first additional proposals and that is the action plan on integration and inclusion. Uh, and this is of course a really where the uh, local and regional authorities are really important because nobody to be true is integrated to to uh, EU or to a member state. They are all were integrated to a local community. And that's where all the support needs to be. And that's where uh, we from the Commission now in the new MFF have much more money available for integration measures. Uh, and I wrote a letter to all member states together with my colleagues, Commissioner Schmidt and Commissioner uh, Ferreira, uh, to show member states all the possibilities for funding that we have on integration. And we promised them also to set up a special, um, special meetings to help them to access uh, these funding for integration. I think that's, that's really important. In the beginning of next year, I'm coming with new proposals also on legal pathways. Uh, we already in the pact proposed that we should step up on resettlement for refugees, where we propose the community-sponsored resettlement scheme. I'm inspired by the Canadian model, and I think that we should develop a European one, where a local community could also take the responsibility uh, on top of uh, the national schemes for, for resettlement. I will also, in the beginning of next year, present a new skills and talent package for legal pathways, pathways for uh, labor purposes. And I can tell you that later today I will also be in a trialog uh, on the blue card. I hope we can finalize it uh, already before Christmas to have also the blue card adopted by the co-legislators and that would also help. Later uh, next year I will also come with new proposals on voluntary returns. That's important both from the EU uh, member states voluntary returns to country of origin, but also to help third countries, our neighboring countries, where I have a lot of people that are more or less waiting to try to get into the European Union, also to uh, uh, propose voluntary returns for them. We have done that in Libya with very good res result together with the African Union. So this is uh, part of, of our proposals. And of course, I understand that there are uh, probably a lot of, of questions on how everything of this will work, and I would be happy to, to answer them. Uh, I will also I've always got this question, will this be adopted by Member States and Parliament? And I will answer that question directly. Of course, I can't say for sure, but I'm very optimistic. We have a very a constructive discussion in Council and in Parliament. And I think that's partly because I reached out very uh, 
uh, intensively to member states and other stakeholders in Parliament before I presented a proposal, and it's a balanced proposal. And I think that everybody realized that nobody is fully satisfied with the proposal. And that, of course, shows also that it is a compromise. I think it's necessary that we have a compromise and a balanced proposal. And I think also important that we de-dramatize the political debate on migration. The situation for specific migrants could be dramatic. But to be able to solve this and to manage this, we need to de-dramatize the political debate about migration. And so far, this is also the reaction from the co-legislators. So I'm not convinced that we will reach an agreement, but I'm quite optimistic. Thank you. Thank you. The floor now to Mark Spice on behalf of the APP. Sehr geehrter Herr Präsident, sehr geehrte Frau Kommissarin Jorgensen, ich bin der Kommission außerordentlich dankbar für die Vorlage dieses Vorschlags zum Migrations- und Asylpaket, weil wir endlich eine Lösung für diese Frage brauchen. Meine Region Nordrhein-Westfalen liegt hunderte, jahrtausende Kilometer entfernt von den Küsten der griechischen Inseln, der Küsten Süditaliens, der Küsten der Kanarischen Inseln. Und deswegen sage ich gerade mit dieser großen Distanz, für mich geht es hier um eine europäische Frage. Die Flüchtlinge, die Schutzsuchenden betreten europäischen Boden und deswegen ist auch Europa in der Pflicht und Verantwortung zu helfen und gerade den Ländern beizustehen, die da ganz vorne in der Herausforderung stehen. Deswegen glaube ich, ist es wichtig, dass das Konzept der Solidarität aufrechterhalten wird. Ich finde es gelungen, dass wir nun ein flexibles und doch verpflichtendes System im Vorschlag der Kommission haben, denn wir brauchen auch diese Flexibilität in der Solidarität und wir brauchen klare Regeln gegen diejenigen, die das System missbrauchen. Das betrifft den Menschenhandel ebenso wie diejenigen, die unseres Schutzes nicht bedürfen, die wir konsequent zurückführen müssen. Auch das hat die Kommissarin gesagt. Wenn wir jetzt die nächsten Schritte angehen, ist es aus meiner Sicht ganz wichtig, dass wir die Perspektive der kommunalen Gebietskörperschaften der Regionen mit einbeziehen. Denn es sind gerade die Kommunen und die Regionen, die mit den Herausforderungen ganz unmittelbar betroffen sind, auf eine ganz praktische Weise. Und es ist wichtig, dass wir diese Erfahrungen auch in den Prozess der weiteren Ausgestaltung des Paktes einbringen. Davon bin ich tief überzeugt. Insofern bin ich sehr dankbar und begrüße es, dass sich das Paket ausdrücklich zum Aufbau einer Partnerschaft mit dem Ausschuss der Regionen, zur Aufnahme eines politischen Dialogs und zur Förderung des Lernens und des Austauschs über Integration für lokale und regionale Gebietskörperschaften verpflichtet. Als Vorsitzender der Fachkommission CIVEX freue ich mich auch besonders über die Entwicklung der oper operationellen Partnerschaft ähm, für Integration zwischen dem Ausschuss der Regionen und der Generaldirektion für Migration und Inneres der Europäischen Kommission. Diese Partnerschaft baut auf den Aktivitäten der Plattform Städte und Regionen für die Integration von Migranten auf, in der wir schon heute erfolgreich zusammenarbeiten. Migration ist nach Covid-19 momentan das Thema Nummer eins in vielen europäischen Regionen und Kommunen. Gerade auch bei denen, die an den Außengrenzen liegen und die eine hohe Zahl von Migranten aufnehmen. Viele Regionen erwarten nun plausible Lösungen, um die Situation in Zeiten angespannter Haushalte zu entschärfen. Es ist richtig, wir sollten die gesamte Diskussion entdramatisieren, so wie die Kommissarin das gerade gesagt hat. Wir blicken deshalb mit großer Hoffnung und mit dem gleichen Optimismus, den Sie, Frau Kommissarin Johansson, haben, auf den Vorschlag für das neue Migrations- und Asylpaket. Es stellt die Chance für einen historischen Kompromiss dar, der aus meiner Sicht längst überfällig ist. Vielen Dank. Thank you. The, the floor now to Anthe Grüter from the PES, who's also the Rapporteur on Asylum and Migration Package. Vielen Dank, Herr Präsident. Sehr geehrte Frau Kommissarin Johansson, liebe Mitglieder, im Namen der SPE-Fraktion und in meiner Eigenschaft als Berichterstatterin des ADR begrüße ich den neuen Pakt über Migration und Asyl und seine dringend benötigte Ergänzung, den Aktionsplan für Integration und Inklusion. 
Dies ist, ist in der Tat ein riesiges Paket von Vorschlägen. Ich hoffe aufrichtig, dass es bald zu einem richtigen Pakt wird, in dem sich alle Mitgliedstaaten darauf einigen, sich zu echter Solidarität zusammenzuschließen. Frau Kommissarin, Sie können sich auf die volle Unterstützung des Europäischen Ausschusses der Regionen verlassen. Und wir freuen uns sehr auf den Start der Integrationspartnerschaft zwischen unseren und Ihren Einrichtungen. Ich verstehe voll und ganz das Ausmaß Ihrer Aufgabe, Frau Kommissarin, einen fünfjährigen Stillstand zu überwinden und Gemeinsamkeiten zu finden, um bei den Herausforderungen durch die Migration endlich voranzukommen. Die neuen Vorschläge sind ein Anfang. Es muss aber auch klar sein, dass wir uns nicht nur auf den kleinsten gemeinsamen Nenner einigen dürfen. Wir brauchen ein funktionierendes Migrations- und Asylsystem, bei dem die Menschenrechte und die Rechtsstaatlichkeit in vollem Umfang zu achten sind und bereits bei seinem Design berücksichtigt werden. Wir brauchen ein System echter Solidarität durch eine gerechte und verhältnismäßige Teilung der Aufgaben und der Verantwortung, dass die Rolle der lokalen und regionalen Gebietskörperschaften bei Migration, Asyl und Integration uneingeschränkt anerkennt und unterstützt. Deswegen freue ich mich heute sehr darüber, dass gestern mit der Einigung des Europäischen Parlaments und des Rats über den EU-Fonds zu Asylpolitik, Migration und Integration, AMEF, bis 2027 hierfür eine Grundlage gelegt wurde. Die besondere Rolle der Regionen muss meines Erachtens dadurch beachtet werden, dass eine ordnungsgemäße Konsultation der lokalen und regionalen Führungsebenen erfolgt, beispielsweise bevor Umsiedlungs- oder Rückführungsmaßnahmen ergriffen werden, da solche Verfahren schwerwiegende Auswirkungen auf diese Behörden und diese Gebiete haben. Gleichzeitig müssen wir den Migrationsdruck an den EU-Außengrenzen, an den dort gelegenen Ländern und insbesondere den enormen Druck auf Grenzstädte oder Inseln verringern. Solche Belastungen werden relativiert, wenn wir die Durchschnittswerte der einzelnen Mitgliedstaaten betrachten. Aber konkret vor Ort sind sie einfach unhaltbar. Deshalb müssen wir Unterstützungsmechanismen für Inseln und Grenzstädte aktivieren, die ständig unter extremem Druck stehen. Ich muss auch betonen, dass flexible Beitragsformen für die Mitgliedstaaten keine einfache Möglichkeit werden dürfen, um sich von ihrem fairen Anteil an der Verantwortung freizukaufen. Solidarität ist keine Wohltat und sie muss verpflichtend sein. Vor diesem Hintergrund sollten wir die freiwilligen Maßnahmen europäischer Städte und Regionen zur Aufnahme von Geflüchteten und Migranten über die ihnen zugewiesenen Quoten hinaus uneingeschränkt unterstützen, um ein subnationales, innereuropäisches Solidaritätsnetzwerk aufzubauen. Die PES-Gruppe hält nachdrücklich an der Notwendigkeit fest, das Narrativ über Migration zu ändern. Schließlich ist eine wirksame Integration und Einbeziehung von Migrantinnen und Migranten in die Europäische Union eine soziale und wirtschaftliche Investition, die die europäischen Gesellschaften kohärenter, widerstandsfähiger und erfolgreicher macht. Der neue Aktionsplan für Integration und Inklusion ist in dieser Hinsicht ein sehr nützliches Instrument. Damit der Aktionsplan jedoch sein Bestreben erfüllen kann, alle verschiedenen Phasen des Integrationsprozesses abzudecken, beginnend bereits mit der Phase vor der Abreise für Migranten, müssen wir die legalen Wege zur Migration vollständig entwickeln. Mehr Morias sind nicht erträglich, ethisch nicht vertretbar und widersprechen den europäischen Grundwerten. Vielen Dank. Thank you very much. The floor now to Andreas Kondilis from the Renew Europe Group for three minutes. Thank you, Mr. President. Dear Commissioner, welcome on behalf of the Renew Europe Group. Your portfolio is not an easy one, but I believe that you are up to the challenge. Needless to say, the world has become a global village. Technological development has enabled instant global interconnection, and whether we like it or not, our society will continue to change and develop both online and offline due to demographic change, conflicts, climate change, and so on. 
Nevertheless, we can all agree that the existing European asylum and migration policies are not fit for purpose in a changing world. The pressure on the external borders of the EU, especially on its southern borders, is getting worse and worse. Asylum procedures are not functioning as they are supposed to function. That's what you have already said. And the instruments that we have put in place, such as the blue card, are not sufficiently promoted by, by, the, EU, by the European Union. In the United States of America, everyone who acquires a green card feels proud of it. In the European Union, almost nobody knows about the blue card, and those who do know, uh, they, they, they have to face uh, enormous administrative burden. Our group, Renew Europe, can and will only support a comprehensive approach that takes into account the external dimension of migration, the renewal of our asylum and labor migration systems through solid legal pathway. We will support policies that fight against human traffickers and smugglers while tackling irregular migration because they go hand in hand. Dear Commissioner, having said that, I'm fully aware that the European Union is doing its utmost and you can't be blamed for the situation. We believe that the Commission's proposal is a right step towards building a sustainable migration and asylum system. However, there's still a lot of work to be done and the Renew Europe Group will help you achieve the objectives set. We salute the fact that all the issues are interlinked and that the Commission's proposal is based on solidarity. Without solidarity, there is no EU. Moreover, we cannot achieve a successful migration and asylum policy without a successful integration policy that is well monitored in order to take proper corrective actions. Our policies should be based on the principle of subsidiarity, which does not mean that those facing the issue have to face it alone. Migration is our collective responsibility and we can't leave the burden to the countries protecting the EU external borders. Dear Commissioner, if you had a magic wand, I'm sure you would transform the EU migration policies, but I'm well aware that there's no magical solution. Nevertheless, please allow me to alert you to the fact that some NGOs receive more financial resources from the EU than the local authorities, which themselves are better placed and have more competencies to manage migrants. The role of local authorities is to organize their local communities and their work can, of course, be complemented, but just complemented by civil society organizations and NGOs. In Greece, in my municipality, my city, uh, my city hosts the headquarters of the International Organization of Migration, a country that is facing all the pressures of the migration problem in real time and is heavily suffering the consequences of the ineffective policy of our neighbors and the delays in the implementation of the policies of the EU. Greeks have historically been a hospital and tolerant people, but our local communities have reached their limits. The EU must trust the local and regional authorities as they are the level of government closest to the problem, closest to the citizens and have the highest trust of the citizens. Let me finish by underlining that we cannot bypass and we must not bypass the local and regional authorities if we want to succeed in our migration and integration policies. Thank you very much for your attention. Thank you very much, Mr. Kondilis. Uh, um, the floor now to Massimiliano Fedruga uh, from the ECR for two and a half minutes, please. Grazie Presidente, ringrazio anche la Commissaria per la disponibilità e il confronto su questo importante atto che però riteniamo debba concretizzarsi in primo luogo nel aiutare gli Stati nel controllo dei confini europei. Questo lo chiediamo e lo chiedo perché quello che prevede lo stesso Schengen, perché Schengen non prevede soltanto la libera circolazione all'interno e tra gli Stati europei, ma anche che gli Stati di confini presidino quei confini che sono di tutta Europa. In nessun Stato democratico occidentale è permesso l'ingresso irregolare nel Paese. Purtroppo è quello che è avvenuto in Europa negli ultimi anni, dove non si è distinto, e si continua a non farlo, tra chi ha diritto alla protezione e chi invece non ce l'ha. Questo sta nello Stato dei fatti. L'esempio italiano è eclatante. In Italia c'era una protezione, la protezione umanitaria, che non era una protezione internazionale, oggi è stata reinserita una protezione speciale dall'attuale governo che di fatto dà un'ampia un discrezionalità 
del concedere una protezione e supera lo status di rifugiato e la protezione sussidiaria. Non solo, chi entra eh, in Europa e fa domanda eh, di protezione, di fatto può continuare, ancora prima di avere l'esito alla domanda stessa, a circolare liberamente su territor sul territorio dello Stato dove ha eh, posto la domanda di protezione. Questo impedisce eh, concretamente di fare i rimpatri, di cui la Commissaria giustamente sottolineava la necessità, perché anche nel caso in cui le procedure vengano esplicate, la persona non si rintraccia più, perché circolando liberamente ovviamente non, eh, è, è impossibile rintracciarla per poter effettuare i rimpatri. Non solo, molti paesi dove ci sono accordi per i rimpatri non accettano i loro cittadini, quindi penso che l'Unione Europea avre, eh, potrebbe avere un ruolo, un ruolo importante nel procedere, nel caso anche a sanzioni verso quei paesi che non rispettano la riammissione dei loro cittadini che non hanno diritto di protezione in Europa. Ci stiamo dimenticando come Unione Europea è un diritto fondamentale di queste persone, che è il primo, credo, che è il diritto a non migrare, non il diritto a migrare. E il diritto a non migrare vuol dire la possibilità di rimanere nella propria terra di origine, nel poter trovare soddisfazione, sviluppo e futuro nella propria terra di origine. Invece l'Unione Europea negli ultimi anni ha favorito l'immigrazione irregolare, finanziando anche quelle ONG che purtroppo stanno anche agendo contro norme e legislazione dei diversi Stati nazionali, e continuano a importare immigrati irregolari che rimangono irregolari su territorio europeo. Bisogna procedere invece a politiche che vadano ad aiutare nei paesi di origine e permettere di avere un futuro nel paese di origine. Dico questo, perché, e concludo Presidente, mi scuso se ho rubato qualche secondo in più, perché noi favorendo l'immigrazione irregolare e con queste politiche che ha portato avanti l'Unione Europea, ci stiamo dimenticando di coloro che non hanno la forza né economica né fisica per, per poter fare queste migrazioni. Ci stiamo di dimenticando degli ultimi tra gli ultimi, dei deboli tra i de dei deboli, dei poveri tra i poveri, importando invece mano d'opera a basso costo in Europa e facendo un dumping salariale in in inaccettabile per un paese occidentale. Grazie. Thank you very much. On behalf of the EA Group, Elisabeth Nebrella Villa. For two minutes, please. Yes, uh, thank you, uh, Mr. President, dear Commissioner. The first priority today is and must be the refugee crisis, said Mr. Juncker on his first debate of the State of the Union. Saving lives at sea is not optional, said Ms. von der Leyen on hers. Between these two speeches, five years went through, an estimation says that more than 20,000 lives were lost in the Mediterranean since then, according to IOM's Missing Migrants Project. Since 2014, too many women, men, children have lost their lives in, the, in their search for a better and safer future, far from their homes in what has become the major shame of Europe. Today, we debate on the new pact on migration and asylum, and despite it is a step forward, and even though the commissioner said she was optimistic, we are skeptical on its resolution in the Council, bearing in mind that the same member states that are blocking the EU budget because of the mention to the rule of law are now forming a coalition against this initiative. While the Council keeps blocking any advance in European solidarity, and thus people continue to die in their attempt to escape from wars, persecution and conflict, we, the regions, are ready and prone to help as Commissioner Johansson already know. The Catalan government sent a letter offering our help in the crisis of Moria, and I want to thank the kind answer from Mrs. Johansson. And yes, we did work together with the Spanish government, and from this dialogue, two amendments from the Catalan side were introduced and approved in the Spanish general budget law for 2021, which was passed last week, regarding the creation of safe humanitarian corridors for asylum seekers and measures to reinforce our efforts in sea rescue. More than 10 million have been allocated to this purpose. But we want to do more, and we need the complicity of the Commission too. A direct and improved participation of the regions in the neighborhood development and international cooperation instrument would certainly be a good starting point. Muchas gracias. Muchas gracias. The floor now to Satu Hapanen from the Greens for two minutes, please.
Haluaisin muistuttaa, että maanosamme on etuoikeutettu ja pystyy selviämään yhteisestä maahanmuuton tehtävästä. Jos maailman köyhimmät maat kantavat 80 prosenttia maailman pakolaisongelmasta, me varmasti selviämme keskisuuren kaupungin verran turvapaikanhakijoista. Hyvät ystävät, olen työskennellyt turvapaikanhakijoiden kanssa opettajana ja vapaaehtoisena. Haluan muistuttaa, että me olemme etuoikeutettuja. Meidän ei tarvitse pelätä autopommia, joka surmaa lapsemme. Per perhemme ei pelkää, tarvitse pelätä keskellä yötä kotikylän tehdystä hyökkäyksestä. Meidän opiskelukavereitamme ei tapeta sen vuoksi, että he haluavat oppia, eikä meitä lähetetä eturintamaan sotaan. Oikeusvaltiomme turvaa meitä myös oman valtiomme tai viranomaistemme väärinkäytöksiltä. Nämä tuttavani, joille tämä oli tot todellisuutta, he lähtivät pakoon epäinhimillisiä olosuhteita. Heille ainoa keino oli valita salakuljettajien reitit. Osalle heistä se maksoi oman perheenjäsenen hengen. Me emme voi kutsua ihmisiä laittomiksi siirtolaisiksi, jos emme tarjoa heille laillisia keinoja tulla maahan. Hyvät ystävät, Eurooppa ei voi sulkea silmiä tosi seikalta, että maanosamme on kannettava vastuu maailman turvapaikan haku ja pakolaisongelmasta. Parhaiten tämä tapahtuu kartoittamalla kuntien halukkuus ottaa vastaan pakolaisia turvapaikanhakijoita. Meidän täytyy lisätä kiintiöpakolaisten määrää. Meidän täytyy lisätä yhteistyötä apua maihin, joista turvapaikanhakijat lähtevät. Luoda turvalliset reitit. Salakuljettajien rankaiseminen ei ole ratkaisu pakolaisongelmaan niin kauan kuin turvalliset turvapaikkareitit puuttuvat. Meidän täytyy perustaa vastaanottokeskuksia Euroopan eri maihin ja käydä nämä turvapaikka prosessit eri maissa. Emme voi heittää ongelmaa Euroopan laitojen yli, vaan meidän on kohdattava vastuumme. Hyvät ystävät, EU tulee vastata niistä kustannuksista, mitä kansainvälisestä muuttoliikkeestä ja turvapaikan hausta syntyy. Tämä vaikuttaa myös positiivisesti ja syrjintää vähentävästi vastaanottavissa maissa. On muistuttava, että puhumme todella pienistä määristä, kun puhumme Eurooppaan muutosta. Kiitos puheenjohtaja. Thank you very very much uh, uh, dear colleague. Let us now, uh, if you agree commissioner, would you like to take the floor now for your first reaction to what the political groups had to say so far? Yes, please, and I will be brief because I think there were a lot of very good interventions here and I uh, very much agree, especially with uh, Antje Grother and Mark's speech and also um, Andreas Kondulis. Uh, I think there were a lot of a good things said. Just a few remarks. I think also what's a very important said uh, uh, here by Satya Hapananen. We EU needs to show global leadership. This is important. It's how we act, but also how we act globally and how we also support uh, third countries that are hosting a lot of refugees. And we, of course, as the EU, need to, to take our share. I think it's also important what was mentioned here that we need, of course, to have uh, proper systems in place so that we can make the distinction between those that are eligible to stay and those that are not. We need to prevent people from risking their lives to come to the European Union. Every time a person go into some of those smugglers boat on the Mediterranean and even worse on the Atlantic route, they risk their lives. We have already lost a lot of hundreds of lives this year. And this we need to prevent by fighting the human smugglers, but also by providing uh, legal pathways, both for refugees and for uh, uh, labor migration. It's also important that we uh, can destroy the business model of the smugglers by making it clear that uh, if you come to the European Union without having the right to stay, if you are not in need of international protection, then you will be returned. And we have quite good cooperation with a lot of third countries that do take back their citizens. But I must say that member states can do much more also internally to be able to step up um, on returns. Having said that, it's also important to say uh, that even though not all that want to come to the European Union uh, can come here or can stay here, 
they have to return to the country of origin. But those are people. We are talking about human beings. And they have rights and they have dignity. And they have to be treated according to their rights and their dignity, even if they need to return to the country of origin. I think you already, I think all of you have mentioned also the importance and the big capacity that the local level and regions have in this aspect. And I, I'm listening carefully to your proposals in this aspect. Thank you. Thank you very much, Commissioner. Uh, let me give the floor now to uh, our colleagues uh, who have asked to intervene. The interventions will be for one minute. Uh, and let me start with Anna Magyar, please. Dear President, dear uh, Commissioner and colleagues, uh, when uh, I always try to separate three things when speaking about migration. Firstly, there are people in trouble fleeing from their homeland. They need help and solidarity according to the Geneva Convention of 1953. And they also need help in the issuing country because people have the right to live in their homeland. Secondly, there are illegal migrants trying to enter at the borders. By my opinion, no way to illegally enter to the EU. We have to observe the Schengen border regulations. Representing the citizens of a Schengen border county, I expect from my government not to accept these illegals and I require to strictly protect the borders. Thirdly, there is a need uh, for new workforce in some EU countries. It's a state level competence to decide how to invite workforce. It doesn't belong to common EU migration affairs. Nothing to do with it on EU level. Thank you. Thank you very much, Anna Magyar. Uh, the floor now to Carl Van Luwe. Thank you, uh, Mr. President. Uh, thank you, Madam Commissioner. As European Union, we need to show solidarity, but at the same time, the European Union has to focus on safe borders and on the return on unjustified asylum seekers. There is a positive note. Finally, certain dogmas are broken in regards to the return of unjustified, unjustified asylum seekers. The European Union itself will conclude return agreements with the countries of origin, and it will use its full diplomatic weight, trade, visa policy and development aid. But we still don't have an Australian model in the new migration pact to stop illegal migration by making it impossible with maritime border fences, patrolling the sea, controlling uh, the boats, uh, and fighting the, uh, the smugglers. I hope that the Commission will take this into account. The local and regional authorities feel and see every day the consequences. Thank you. Thank you very much. Joseph Frey, for one minute, please. Sehr, sehr geehrte Frau Kommissarin, die EU hat das Recht auf Asyl nach der Genfer Flüchtlingskonvention in ihre Grundrechtecharta Artikel 18 verankert. Bei dem vorliegenden Paket drängt sich nun aber auf, dass in einzelnen Punkten gegen unsere eigene EU-Gesetzgebung verstoßen wird. Mit dem Kommissionsvorschlag würde nämlich ein Vorprüfungssystem geschaffen werden, mit dem die Ankommenden nach Herkunftsländern aufgeteilt werden und dann je nach Land unterschiedliche Verfahren durchlaufen müssen. Personen aus Herkunftsstaaten mit europaweiten Schutzquoten unter 20 Prozent würden pauschal in ein neues beschleunigtes Grenzverfahren kommen. Diese Grenzverfahren sind aber keine fairen Asylverfahren, denn sie ermöglichen keine gründliche Prüfung der Asylanträge und schaffen ein Zweiklassensystem. Wir würden damit den Zugang zu einem echten Asylverfahren in der Europäischen Union in vielen Fällen verwehren. Grundrechte dürfen nicht teilbar sein. Im Übrigen gilt es auch für Frontex-Einheiten. Ich sehe bei diesem Paket die Gefahr einer Abschaffung des individuellen Asylrechts gemäß Artikel 18 unserer Grundrechtecharta. Dem müssen wir uns ganz klar entgegenstellen. Thank you very much. Uh, the floor now to Vincenzo Bianco for one minute, please.
Presidente Commissaria, grazie innanzitutto per il suo intervento. Devo dire francamente che ci sono forze politiche anche in Italia e non solo, anche paesi europei, che speculano sulla paura dei cittadini, come se l'unico problema dell'Europa, il principale problema dell'Europa fosse quella dei migranti. È un problema serio, io condivido l'impostazione del documento della Commissione che ha tenuto anche conto delle sollecitazioni che come Comitato delle Regioni abbiamo avanzato anche con il mio parere, ma chiediamo all'Europa di avere coraggio, di avere più coraggio perché la politica deve essere una politica più europea e meno lasciata ai singoli Stati nazionali, a partire dal contrasto alle organizzazioni che creano il traffico di esseri umani, alla vigilanza sulle frontiere. Eh, commissaria, bisogna rafforzare la responsabilità di Frontex, anche in materia di prima accoglienza e anche in materia di immigrazione. Insomma, io la sollecito ad avere coraggio perché il, questo tema non può essere che affrontato in maniera europea. E lo dice chi è stato Ministro dell'Interno della Repubblica Italiana, ma anche Sindaco di una città dell'isola siciliana di Catania, in prima linea nell'affrontare questo dramma di questi esseri umani. Grazie Presidente, grazie Commissari. Grazie. The floor now to Dimitris Birbas, please. The floor to Ankel Victor Torres for one minute. Muchas gracias, estimada comisaria. Quiero darle las gracias por el esfuerzo e interés que está teniendo ante la difícil situación por la inmigración irregular. Decía usted en su intervención que el año pasado 140.000 personas llegaron de manera irregular. En lo que va de año, en la vía del Atlántico, que es la que llega a Canarias, han llegado más de 20.000 personas. Significa un porcentaje altísimo a ocho islas, que es lo que supone las Islas Canarias. Me alegra escuchar de todos los intervinientes apelar a una obligada solidaridad europea, porque hay que tenerlo con los países y especialmente con las comunidades que somos fronteras, que somos los que recibimos a los inmigrantes. Y por ello, lo que pedimos es un apoyo específico a estas comunidades a donde llegan los inmigrantes. Por supuesto que hay que repatriar, sí, pero también hay que acoger, hay que responder y hay que atender. Y no podemos nosotros solos. Por eso es fundamental que haya un reparto responsable en Europa entre los Estados miembros. Y también con los menores no acompañados, porque estamos soportando 14 millones de euros de nuestro fondo. Debemos trabajar. Thank you very much. Uh, is Dimitris Birbas connected now? For one minute, you have the floor. Okay, the floor then to Adam Caraxoni for one minute. Tisztelt elnök úr, biztos asszony, kedves kollégák! Hibás az a megközelítés, hogy a migrációnak gyorsnak és zöggenőmentesnek kell lennie. Eljött azt kell biztosítani, hogy az mindenek előtt legális és biztonságos legyen. És mondjuk ki, hogy az újonnan érkezőknek alkalmazkodniuk kell az európai életmódhoz, kultúrához, nem pedig párhuzamos társadalmakat felépíteni, ahogy ezt Európa több városában tapasztalhatjuk. A jelenségre példák a már meglévő nógúzónák is, melyeket, ahogy Merkel kancellár mondta, néven kell nevezni, és tenni kell velük valamit. Tisztelt biztos asszony! Ön azt mondja, azért kell még több migráns, mert a társadalmunk öregszik, és kell a munkaerő, melynek biztosítása egyébként nem bizottsági, hanem tagállami feladat. Nos, a társadalmunk azért öregszik, mert az európai családokban nem születik elég gyermek. Hát tegyünk ellene! Változtassunk ezen. Éppen ezért a régiók bizottsága álláspontja szerint elsődleges feladatunk, hogy a családoknak nyújtott különböző támogatásokkal a gyermekvállalást ösztönözzük, ne pedig a migrációt.
Thank you very much. The floor now to Frank Proust for one minute. Entendez? Oui. Oui, merci Monsieur le Président, merci Apostolos, merci Madame le Commissaire pour le travail que vous avez effectué. Euh, effectivement, euh, je crois qu'il faut travailler sur les conséquences et bien séparer les migrants économiques euh, des migrants politiques. Et j'apprécie votre approche canadienne, notamment sur les migrants économiques, avec des définitions en amont des besoins. Mais si nous voulons être efficace sur les conséquences, et là où vous avez raison, c'est un travail que nous devons mener sur les causes, et notamment avec les pays tiers. Et je pense que globalement, nous devons faire un véritable pacte avec l'Afrique, je l'ai déjà dit en commission, et travailler notamment sur les données démographiques. Car malheureusement, sur le continent africain, même avec une croissance économique à deux chiffres, cette croissance économique n'absorbe pas la croissance démographique. Donc ce que nous observons, aujourd'hui sur le continent européen, eh bien ce n'est le début malheureusement des flux migratoires. Donc nous devons agir et travailler, dialoguer avec le continent africain pour faire en sorte de limiter les flux migratoires en amont. En tout cas, même si le problème est difficile à résoudre, je crois, Madame la Commissaire, que vous avez eu raison de mettre sur la table ce problème. Merci beaucoup, Franck. Um, the floor now to Mr. Gonzalez for one minute. Mr. Gonzalez. So, thank you for that. Ansvaret för att ta emot flyktingar måste vara ett gemensamt ansvar och inte delas upp mellan de som tar emot och de som skickar ut. I första hand så måste vi sluta att se migration som ett problem för medlemsländerna och befolkningen i EU. Tyvärr så har en växande xenofobi fått ta ett allt större utrymme i den här debatten. Och tyvärr så har det också gett avtryck i förslaget i den här debatten. Snabbavgöranden riskerar att skapa rättsosäkerhet i asylprocessen. Vi bara titta på hur osäker den processen är för asylprövning i länder som i eget Sverige. Som i många andra sammanhang anklagas för att vara allt gästvänliga. Jag är rädd för hur det kan komma att bli framöver och hur rättssäkerheten ska kunna garanteras. Det skulle vara intressant att få ett svar på det. Tack. Thank you very much. Is the connection with Mr. Birbas? Now fixed. Okay, Dimitris Birbas. Kire Prodev, Karisto, Kiria Epitrope, Thilo Kyogomet Siram Naheretis, Oti Brotovulia Sas, Pomos in a Arketa Kathisterimenis Hesi, Metisanisovodis Katanomes, Pu Echi Epiferito Dublino. Kafto in a Dima Miathes Mikis and the Parkas, Kenos Elimatos Politikis Yesia Senosis. Και θέλω να πω κάτι και πραγματικά έχετε απόλυτα δίκιο όταν λέτε ότι πρέπει να αλλάξουμε το αφήγημα και να αποδραματοποιήσουμε τη συζήτηση για τη μετανάστευση, γιατί όπως πολύ σωστά αναφερθήκατε, αυτό είναι ένα γεγονός που είναι γίνεται επί πολλούς αιώνες και έχει και πολλά πολλά θετικά αποτελέσματα, ειδικά στη δική μας ήπειρο. Όμως, το σύμφωνο που κατατίθεται εκφράζει στεναρά την αλληλεγγύη μεν, αλλά δεν δεσμεύει με κυρώσεις στους ανητές της. Έτσι εύκολα μπορούμε να οδηγηθούμε στη μετατροπή περιοχών του Μεσογειακού Νότου και ιδιαίτερα των νησιωτικών σε αποθήκες ψυχών. Εξορθολογίζει μεν τη διαχείριση των ετοιμάτων, ενέχει όμως όπως επισημάνθηκε και από άλλους συναδέλφου, τον κίνδυνο εύκολης απόρριψης λόγω του πολύ μικρού χρονικού περιθωρίου ολοκλήρωση των διαδικασιών. Ενισχύει μεν την αποτροπή επικίνδυνων επαναπροωθήσεων, αλλά δεν δεσμεύει για τη σταθερή ανακατανομή ανάμεσα στις χώρες μέλη και δεν εγγυάται την ασφαλή μεταχείριση στις χώρες επαναπροώθησης. Χαίρομαι που και εσείς και οι συνάδελφοι επεσήμεναν πολλά προβλήματα στη διαδικασία της νόμιμης ένταξης αλλά και της επαναπροώθησης εκεί. Και το οφείλουμε αυτό και για λόγους γιατί είμαστε συνυπεύθυνοι χώρες μέλη και σύμμαχοί μας για την κατάσταση που δημιουργούνται για άσυλο και μετανάστευση με συγκεκριμένους γεωπολιτικούς χειρισμούς, οικονομικές παρεμβάσεις και συχνά με πολεμικές επιχειρήσεις. Κυρία Πρόεδρε, και 
και από τον δικό μας πρόεδρο και από πολλού συναδέλφου ότι δεν μπορεί να πραγματοποιούνται μεγάλες επιχειρησιακά και οικονομικά παρεμβάσεις στην Ένωση μόνο σε συνεννόηση με τις εθνικές κυβερνήσεις. Κάτι τέτοιο συμβαίνει στη χώρα μου. Χωρίς διαβούλευση με τις περιφερειακές αρχές και τις τοπικές που υφίστανται τις πιέσεις και αυτές αντιμετωπίζουν και εγγυώνται την τοπική ανθεκτικότητα. Ευχαριστώ πάρα πολύ κύριε Πρόεδρε, πιστεύω ότι θα μας ακούσετε και πραγματικά θα γίνουν πράξη όλες αυτές οι προϋποθέσεις που βγαίνουν σε αυτή τη νέα συμφωνία που εμείς και εσείς θα, θα δημιουργήσουμε. Thank you Mr. Virbas. Uh, commissioner, uh, it is uh, finally time for your uh, final intervention after you've heard and thank you very much for your patience, uh, the ideas and the proposals of... Uh, the members of the Committee of the Regions. So you have the floor. Thank you very much. And I always appreciate to listen to you uh, with direct uh, experience and uh, responsibilities from, from the local level. So it's very uh, important for me. Just a few remarks. First, uh, I think what some, um, I think about Mr. Prosa, the importance of partnership with Africa. Of course, it's of the essence uh, for many reasons. Uh, I would also like to comment on the Canary Islands. Uh, we now see a huge increase of people using the Atlantic road, which is the most deadly route ever to the European Union. We don't know how many lives have been lost, but we do know that uh, uh, the lot, almost uh, 20,000 people have come to the Canary Islands uh, irregularly. Uh, this seems like a huge majority of, the, of these are not refugees and they have to be returned. And this is really a, a challenge right now. I went to the Canary Island recently together with uh, the Spanish minister. It was uh, very important for me to meet also directly with the local authorities, the local mayors uh, on the Canary Islands to discuss this issue. Uh, Spain has asked for additional funding and for the Canary islands and we have approved that. I also went last week to Morocco uh, because I think it's important. A majority of those are now arriving at the Canary Island are Moroccans. Uh, I guess very few of them are refugees and it's important that Morocco also take back their citizens. So we are working uh, on this issue. I would like to make a few clarifications also according to what's been said here. First, uh, my proposal is not infringing fundamental rights at all. At the opposite, we are actually strengthening the fundamental rights, and especially when it comes to children, we have a clear child's perspective. It's uh, a misunderstanding that there should be different kind of uh, asylum procedures for different people. Everybody has the right to a proper and fair asylum procedure. What I would like to achieve with the border uh, procedure is that for those probably not in need of international protection, this procedure takes place at the borders so that we can have a swift return if there is a negative decision. And of course, uh, otherwise you will be integrated into society. One other reason for that is that I should think that we should not relocate those that are probably not in need of international protection. Otherwise, we would really help the smugglers to even have um, uh, to earn even more money on their uh, dangerous routes. So this is uh, uh, so it's, it's the same right to apply for uh, as asylum and the same right to have your application processed in a fair uh, way. It, even if you go through border procedures. Uh, and we'll also say protecting our borders, uh, it's uh, always in the combination of the possibility for those who want to apply for asylum to do so and to enter, to have their asylum application processed. That is in line with the Geneva Convention, that is in line with our acquis. So protecting our borders is not compatible with uh, denying people from uh, to apply for asylum. And that's why I also proposed in my pact that all member states should have a, uh, an independent monitoring mechanism to make sure that pushbacks should not take place. People that come to our borders and apply for asylum have to have their application processed and decided. If it's a negative one, they have to return. If they are in need of protection, they are welcome and we should protect them. Thank you very much for all your uh, intervention and I'm really happy to work very close with you further on, especially when it comes to integration. But I think also that your views on uh, the migration and asylum pact in all aspects have been very valuable for me. Thank you. 
Thank you very much, uh, Commissioner, for your uh, time, your effort, and your great work uh, all this year. And thank you very much uh, for maintaining this close contact with the committee, the European Committee of the Regions. Um, it is true that uh, you have been uh, following our work and our proposals and you have incorporated them in the pact and this is something very important for us. So I really want to thank you for that and uh, always keep in mind that regions, cities all around Europe are here to help implement this pact and uh, we will continue working until uh, the European Union finally manages to create uh, all the, uh, let's say, the preconditions for uh, a better handling of, of the situation, especially when it comes to uh, sharing the burden of, uh, of this responsibility of the immigration crisis all throughout uh, Europe to all 27 member states, because this, as I said at the beginning of my speech, is a European issue. So we should not have uh, this issue being dealt only by one or two or three countries alone. We are here in this together and solidarity is the basic value of the European Union that we all serve and believe in. Thank you very much for your time, your support, and uh, we will see you very uh, soon again in one of our plenaries. Thank you.